Hey, don't you? A small country without its own nation, which it would seem should not be, has been successfully developing for almost two centuries and is even the political center of the European Union. Belgium survived two world wars and it is about the first of them will be today's video. I think everyone knows how the first world war started, so I will be brief. August 1914. Because of the murder of some noblemen in Bosnia, Austria declared war on Serbia, in which Russia intervened. On August 1st, Germany declared war on Russia and the next day occupied Luxembourg. After that, sent an ultimatum to Belgium to let German troops into France for the duration of the Schlitten plan. Belgium was considered a neutral country and it did not give in to the German demands. So on August 4, 1914, the German troops crossed the border. Their goal was the main defense line of Belgium, the city of Liège, after the occupation of which the whole country would be as in the palm of their hands. The offensive was undertaken by limited forces, only 33,000 men. Since mobilization in Germany had not yet been carried out, a peacetime army was used. These forces were planned to destroy Belgium just in time for the formation of a new group of troops, which will already participate in the offensive on Paris. The Belgian army by August 6 had 117,000 people, which were located not along the entire front line, but in the triangle of Brussels, Liège, Namur. And it was near Liège that the first battle of the Great War took place. In it, the German corps was defeated and withdrew to the villages, where the first crimes of the war were committed. German soldiers were saddened by the defeat and began to rob and burn. But about this later. Having increased the number of soldiers to 60,000, Germany took the city of Liège and besides the forts. On the August 16, the forts fell and about a third of the Belgian army was destroyed. After, Germany launched an offense upon Namur and Brussels, seeking to finally defeat the Belgians. Germany easily broke through the Maas River and surrounded Namur, while the main forces went further and took the Belgian capital without a single fight. The Belgian government and the remnants of the troops led to Antwerp, which also was besieged. Thus, by August 20, almost the entire territory of Belgium was under German control, and the advancing troops went on the offensive in France. On August 25, Namur fell, and the siege of Antwerp continued until October 9, after which the Belgian retreated to the neutral Netherlands. It is believed that the Belgian army managed to hold off the Germans long enough for the intent to react, but this is not true. Despite the initial setbacks, the German offensive went exactly according to plan. However, as can be seen from the map, this defeat was not the end of the Belgian army. Its remnants of 46,000 people retreated. The German offense on Paris failed, the front stabilized and began the so-called race to the sea. German and French troops tried to outflank each other. In the course of this, the Belgian army took one more battle on October 25. At first, the Belgians were defeated and were about to retreat, but French General Foch changed their mind and instead the Belgians opened the floodgates of the dikes, flooding the region with water and stopping the German advance. This included the win over phase of World War I. After that, Belgium did not conduct independent operations, acting as an additional intent force. However, there is not only European front. Belgium also fought in Africa, where the colonial police, consisting mainly of locals, fought German Uganda, losing 9,000 men. Some restless Belgians even found themselves on the Eastern Front as well. A detachment of 350 Belgians on armored cars participated in the Brusilov breakthrough in Galicia in 1916, and after the revolution and the beginning of the Russian Civil War, made a merry journey from Kiev to Vladivostok by train through the chaos-torn Russia. This is the end of the description of the fighting in Belgium, but not the end of the video. As I said, the German occupation of Belgium was not the most pleasant. The first killings of civilians began already when the troops entered Belgium. Germans, having suffered the first defeat near Liège, retreating to Belgian villages and started arson attacks there. About 300 houses were burned and the village of Bies was destroyed. The looting continued after the fall of the front. 600 innocent people were shot in Dian, 156 in Andenne, 383 in Tamina, and etc. All these crimes were justified by the fact that the civilians were first, but in fact German propaganda was to blame. During the Franco-Prussian War, the French army showed itself not at its best. France suffered one defeat after another and finally surrendered Paris. However, many ordinary French people did not want to put up with the defeat and themselves provided feasible resistance to the Germans. These guerrillas were called fraternites and caused a lot of trouble for the Prussians. Therefore, the German command decided to warn soldiers about the partisans and overdid it. The Germans killed everyone who seemed suspicious to them. But alas, paranoia was not enough. With the connivance of the common, German soldiers looted and burned whole settlements just for profit. Thus, on August 25, the German army looted the city of Leuven, destroying 2,000 buildings and deporting more than 10,000 people. 
There were also cases of using civilians as human shields. The first such case acquired in Andenne when Germany decided to cover a pontoon bridge with civilians from the fire of Belgian Fort. Another similar case acquired during the Battle of Mons when German soldiers used Belgian citizens to provide cover from British fire. All of this, combined with the looting of Belgian industry, forced 1.5 million people, 20% of the whole population at the time, to flee the country. In 1915, after widespread outrage, the killings were stopped and replaced by deportation and imprisonment. A total of 6,000 civilians were killed and 100,000 deported during the war. All these crimes were actively used in USA and Great Britain as propaganda, naturally exaggerating them. After the war there was even a version that all the crimes were made up, but it turns out not to be so. Of course, compared to what awaited Europe 20 years after World War I, 6000 casualties seems like a very small number, but in any case it's a significant crime against humanity that few people have heard of. Thanks for watching, you leave a like, subscribe to my channel and leave comments with suggestions for video topics. Also join my discord server, I'll link in the description.